Hello everyone. I thought I'd quickly hop on live to give an update about the school games, how things are going on day 21. So a little bit less or almost seven days still left until the end of the games. And I want to give you an update. I want to give you the behind the scenes of our strategy and also what we're doing right now. And I'm going to get really practical, take you inside my active campaign ad account and all of those good things. Okay. So before we dive into that, quickly the update as in where are we standing right now? So um, we were able to work our way up and hold the first place currently. And as you can see, right now we're not making big jumps. And that's because we closed down our bundle offer a little bit more than a day ago. And now we have dropped the price uh, because now it's quote unquote only the new membership and community separately for $8. And so with that in mind, that's actually really good numbers. Uh, so in the last 21 days, we started from scratch in school and we were able to get on school to $66,500 monthly recurring revenue. Um, so which we're really grateful for. And in the community, I also want to quickly show you we have crossed a thousand members in this new um, setup here on school in the group. And this is community plus how it works in school. It's also that you have all your training materials, etc., in here directly, which people really appreciate it. Um, it's very, very engaged at the moment because we also started to utilize the gamification element and uh, start to unlock things at certain levels of engagement. And I quickly want to show you the members count and where things are going right now. So like I said, we closed a little bit more than a day ago on our bundle deal where we got 843 members in. And now since we dropped the price to to $8, we already got over 150 new members in. So we're really excited about that. And I quickly want to show you how it came to that number and how what we're doing here to grow this number so that, you know, we don't of course, we're grateful that we were able to really, really get ahead when we were closing the bundle deal, but you can't sleep on it because we have very fierce competition here. OK, so um, I also want to share with you, I've been if you're in the school games community, if you look for my name, I've been basically documenting and sharing everything that I have done so you can go through my posts. I, I showed how we're doing closing door strategy including videos. And so if you're just looking for my post, you'll see, find a lot of detailed information around that. And in here, I also broke down the exact emails, etc., that we send. And I, I want to show to you in this video as well. And the ad strategy we used, which I also want to show you, and now the ad strategy that we're currently using and the email strategy that we're currently using. So the majority of sales, let me just very quickly check in if you guys can hear me if there are any, there are 14 people watching. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, what country, how late it is. If you have any questions, um, just drop them below. You now have the chance to get them answered live. So um, we have mainly been driving sales. So basically all of this has been, the majority from this has been from email. So. We did a retargeting campaign when we let the offer die. And I quickly want to show you what that looked like in here. So um, let me just see if I can find that. That was the final sale. So here we were spending 250 for a few days and we, we spent 830 euros. And like you can say, we got 561 clicks. Cost per click was one euro 40 ish. This is really good for us in a, uh, on our ad account from our experience. And we had where's our custom conversion? We had 19 conversions tracked where people were clicking on the submit button. So now you need to know that the way it works in school, and especially if you if you want to participate in the school games, um, you cannot track conversion directly on school. And to participate in the school games, you would have to have somebody uh, sign up through school using school payments. 
right? So we were basically sending people here and then now we have offer expired, but this is a bridge page. And when people click through, they would come to the about us page on school, which is basically the sales page that you have available, right? You don't have a lot of options here, um, which is why the one reason why we sent through a bridge page, but the other reason is that when we send through a bridge page, we can track the click of this button as a custom conversion and we can at least somewhat measure our efforts, right? Facebook is attributing this, at, um, could be that they're under attributing. For us, it was really important that we just re-reach a big chunk of our audience and remind them of the offer. So other than those $831, the, there was no ad spend kind of on the other side of those $66,000. Everything else was coming through email. And before I show you the how we've built up to email and the strategy we used, I just quickly want to Hi, thank you for tuning in. I'll come back to check if any questions pop up. Thank you for being Coach Kofab. I appreciate it so much. So, um, one post that I shared here was about our email strategy. And how did I say this? I think I said we drive sales with emails. Here's how. We drive sales. Let me see if I can find this anywhere else. This is why we were going first on invite only. Did I make so many posts in here? <laughs> or oh, I had a lot of mentions. Let me see if I can find it. If not, I'm going to have to tell you from my memories. There you go. <laughs> okay, so if you're in the school community, probably search for we use email to drive sales. Here's how. So this is exactly how we've built up to be able to get those 66,000 um, basically from organic, only from our list, right? So first step is defining the transformation that your paid community offers. And this is typically you map out either what the before or the after is. You flip that into the negative or positive, right? Then you have a problem statement because you have what is right now does not equal the desired state. And that in itself is the definition of a problem, which means what we want to have is not what it, what the current state is, right? Then you say, okay, we, we have those two states. What are the three steps to bridge it? I personally then like to break each step down into three steps again, and then I have a nine step transformation framework, right? So this is the foundational clarity around the transformation that you offer that you would want to have. Then you would want to look at the very beginning of that transformation and you would want to say, okay, zooming in on those problems that people encounter as they work through those initial three steps, right? What are tangible, small, but painful nuances that they face where I can take off some creative burden to make their lives easier, right? So for example, one thing that I did in the school community was I created with ChatGPT a naming prompt for the gamification levels. So you have nine levels of gamification and you would want that to levels prompt so you would want your engagement levels to be a reflection of two things the engagement and value contributed to the community and the skill up level right and so how do you do that you use this prompt and you ask ChatGPT for help and this is how we came up for example in our community here um, that is where the theme of our sales pitch already was around the Roman Empire, but this is how we basically came up with those level names, also with a beautiful explanation as into what each level name means, because 
members ask you for these things, right? So a thing like that is a begin is a beginner's problem, right? Something that it's not it's not the the, the you know it's not as big as here's the ultimate cheat sheet to to succeeding with your paid community on school because the scope is too big, right? But it's like, hey, as you're trying to do this, you very likely will encounter the problem of having to name your levels inside of school. And let me give you a prompt so you can save a few hours and potentially get a better outcome, right? This is the second step. And school games is monthly recurring revenue. Yes, this is subscription. So a, a bigger chunk of this will come again. Um, I just, Jeanette, I come very quickly to your question. I'll just want to briefly finish this because I think it's really important to catch that. Mm. So from that transformation, right, zoom in. Now an idea like the prompts, like what I just showed you, this is a great idea for a strategic freebie. It's super tangible, relatively self-explanatory, specific functioning as a filter towards the type of people that I want to reach right now, which is potentially people who want to pay a group paid communities. And, you know, in this specific case, using school. And so the next step after this is to mock up the freebie and write your ad copy. I've included an example here of one of my current, or this is my currently best performing strategic freebie, which is 77 coaching questions in a dashboard where you can also put your session notes. And then you have a short copy there. If you're interested, I'm going to let you take a screenshot. I'm not walking you through that as well. Um, and then basically you set up a lead generation campaign. This is a campaign type where everything happens on Facebook, including in on Facebook forms. You don't send people away from Facebook to an opt-in page or anything. It happens on Facebook. You have an on Facebook form, and then you use an automation tool, an integration tool like Make or Sapier to connect your lead form with your email autoresponder. Like for example, I have active campaign, right? So that your leads come in there and you can deliver on the freebie that you have advertised. And then of course have a welcome follow-up sequence to nurture. And so this is the fourth step. And after this, you are going into the nurture phase. And this means that you keep providing to, <laughs> value to your email list for years to come. And I want to tell you this, the first months of having my email list, the first half year, that was my email list was unprofitable. So I was running on sheer belief <laughs> that eventually the money will be in the list. And that at various points, I was really questioning it. And with that also neglecting my list. But as I kept nurturing over time, my list got more and more and more and more valuable. And now I can do things like launch into $66,000 monthly recurring revenue setups, right? Only from my email list, right? Where there's no advertising costs um, that kind of counter the, the profitability there. Obviously, I have team cost because the offer here was also rather complex. So we had thousands of pieces of communication going back and forth with our existing audience to really sell the offer via email in our Facebook groups. Um, so that cannot be underestimated, but that was more due to the complexity of the bundle offer than it was um, because of email, right? So this is how then kept providing value with two to three valuable emails per week for a few years. and you know, eventually it grows into a really big asset and what I would now consider the backbone of my business. So this is email. This was the first strategy. I show you how we were creating an impact spike with uh, income spike with the closing launch emails. But before that, I want to catch Jeanette's question. When you were just starting out and you had one-to-one -one clients and were also building your memberships, how did you balance your time in that boat right now? And I'd love to that I'm not stressed about money and yet time seems to be my bottleneck. I want to say in the beginning, it was really hard. I still had my agency on business on the side. So my background is in running Facebook ads and building websites for others, right? So I would, I would first do that in, within companies. And then eventually I would uh, offer that as a side hustle. And then after I had one project that went really big, that was not Facebook ads and funnels though, it was directly selling to Amazon. Uh, after that project went really big, I had a bigger buyout. Uh, after the structure there changed and they basically cut us off from one day to the other. I think this is why I'm so passionate about um, low ticket and a volume of customers. So you have centipede amount of legs to stand on instead of one leg to stand on. Um, 
And so I had the buyout and then I had to figure out what do I want to do with my life now moving forward. And my first instinct was, you know, going back to what worked before, which was building funnels, running Facebook ads for others. And at that time, I was also moving to Canada, or at least, you know, spending a few months there to see where life will take me. And over there, I got in, we were also looking for jobs on Upwork, right? And there was a lot of need in the course creator space. And I hadn't been in that industry before I had I've been in e-commerce and when I entered that industry and I saw how ads have been run by previous account managers, I was like, this is all wrong. We don't do things here like that. And so it's, it was kind of the, the experience from e-commerce that influenced how I've been running ads for coaches, got relatively good results quickly, but then also realized that you you cannot be a great agency for a coach unless you can significantly influence how they build their offers and how they service their customers. And so um, I realized that, you know, potentially I would love to just teach others how to run their ads and then also how to build their offers so that, because that really needs to be a fit in this niche. And then I started to build my own personal brand. And I still had my agency engagement on the side. I still had e-commerce clients that I was running ads for. I built up my personal brand with the exact strategy that I shared with you. And I wasn't former partner. There was struggles with a payout. I had bought a flat, took out less credit because I thought that there would be a payout coming. So I, had, I was in a liquidity crunch at that time, you know, and also uh, concerned legally if it would come to a battle. And... At that time, I really didn't have significant amounts of money to spare. So what I did was I used the free sessions to paid clients strategy that you have as a dashboard in Coach Growth Hub. Um, and while I was growing my audience, I would monetize by offering free sessions. That was funnel and ad audit sessions. And then basically by the end of the session, when somebody had my opinions, etc., typically I would say, you know, if if you need further help, then let me know. I can tell you my hourly rate. And from that, I got my first one-to-one -one clients that would eventually come again and then buy packages. Uh, and I would charge $97 an hour and I would take that money and put it back into the ads because I knew that these, I loved those hours. I was learning a lot, right? I was getting real market insight and understanding my ideal client. At the same time, trading time for money. When you have the agency, when you have a baby, my now husband and I were you know, struggling at that time. And he was away in Canada for months. It was really, really hard. So I have to say that I got humbled a lot in this time of a very proud person, but I asked for any and all help I could receive. I asked my dad if he can help me out with my son. I would often work from his place, which I'm also currently right now. I'm in my dad's sauna room again, which is also where I created my first video sales letter for my membership that worked from. Um, and he's outside playing with Danny because my husband is also in, in Canada at the moment, right? So I got extremely resourceful. I asked people for help. I realized some people actually love to help. He loves to spend time with his grandson anyway, especially if we can facilitate a setup that works for him also really well. I asked my sister. I would drive to my mom to work there. And really just thinking of every, every time I sold my hour one-to-one -one for, I was like, need to put it in ads, need to develop one too many offers so I can potentially end this vicious cycle. But it was a longer phase than you might think. And it took me all the way to 2021, where I already had Coach Growth Hub. And when the $7 membership got us to 1,000 members, where I was then letting go of my last, um, no, actually one year later after that, I was going letting go of my last one-to-one -one client. Uh, but there I had reduced it to a really, really low amount and clients that were really, you know, easy to manage. And um, that I also learned a lot from when I could spend their budgets. So I think the the biggest hack in, in that time is always trying to trade up. So always trying to do something with your time that creates a system that works for you when you don't like the lead generation Right. Or when you, for example, work on um, your pre-launch content, batch create that so you can schedule it out. Um, things like working on a self-liquidating offer that can offset your ad spend. When you work anyways, document what you do. So I will a little bit later after this session, I will actually jump on. I am writing a sales page for a strategic partner 
and I'm documenting the process. Obviously, not everyone is in a niche where they can do that. But whenever you're doing something, right? So let's say you're a breathwork coach. When you do your daily breathwork, record yourself, right? Take people alongside that journey. Or even when you develop your course content, right? Say, hey, I just created this. Here's why I think it's important. I'm excited about this. Or this is this piece where I get stuck because I don't know. What do you think about that, right? So just making sure that you don't overcomplicate that and basically through documentation, keep the conversation with your audience going. I think that was also really helpful. And then last but not least of what I already alluded to yesterday and where I shared the training in Coach Growth Hub as well as in the offer builders is you have to have really clear goals for your quarter and then you need to break those down into your action steps and then you need to prioritize those action steps. And then with the daily self-management worksheet, you need to prioritize all the tasks that are flying around in your brain, right? I should, I should, I should, I should. Brain dump, prioritize. And the biggest win in time-wise is the things where you look at and where you're like, looking at this truthfully with my goals, I should not be doing these things and cutting and making a conscious decision to cutting them out. For me, this was partially really hard because I'm a people pleaser and I was doing a lot of favor work, like really. <laughs> um, and at one point I also realized that while I kept justifying a lot of that with what I just justified not cutting off clients earlier before, which was like, yeah, I'm also learning a lot here. Um, I just wasn't being honest with myself here that this is not something where I will benefit from in the future in any meaningful way. And that I'm actually letting myself be a little bit taken advantage of, which completely is was on me right it's just, that was my decision to do that and to say yes but eventually once i got more mindful about those things i also got a lot of time back so um that would be my advice for everyone who's still you know in that kind of setting where they need to work up the way and then as soon as you can um trade up your hours so you know if there are tasks that somebody can do you would not want to look at how much time do i work how much money do i make divided this is my hourly rate which on the thing, which task on the plate, right? Can somebody, can I find somebody for that can do this below this hourly rate? Trade up, right? This is how you free your schedule as well. Yeah, I know. And I'm so heartbroken because MRR now everyone is like, Master Risa writes, no, <laughs> we don't want to have anything to do with that. Uh, sure, absolutely. So school is... Basically, in a nutshell, here's my opinion. School is what Facebook groups should have been, but Facebook just doesn't care enough about the education industry to make it a real product. So school was founded by Sam Ovens. He's a now former coach course creator. And basically what he did is genius. It is just taking that concept of a community very similar to how it used to be in Facebook, I would in Facebook, I would say, you know, simplified streamlined. Um, so you have this group component here with a few things that I love that he baked in. Like, for example, you can filter by comments that are unread or you can filter by comments where uh, posts where there are no comments. Right. So, you know, oh, who needs attention and some urgent love and feedback um, and elements like the gamification, like the leaderboard. So simplified stripped back but with the features that really make a difference for you community with gamification element and then what's really cool is that you have your training materials in there as well so in our case very often and unfortunately because we have multiple memberships people need to log in into multiple places to get their resources so you know people have to log into a separate portal to get their resources and then they have to go to a separate place the, the community to get their training and then there are trainings that are happening in the communities so we add them to the guide section here right so some facebook groups you can act not all right which is all which also sucks because for some people that feature is just cannot be activated there's a technical glitch in their group right so but most groups you should be able to activate it and so we have collected trainings here in our group as well in the guide section and i would say school is like a very sophisticated uh, that the classrooms are like a very sophisticated version of that guide section so you can put like your whole coursework 
basically in there, but it's also really cool because you can organize, you know, into multiple courses and you can restrict the access to the courses based on, you can give it to just certain members. I actually need to dig in a little bit more here why um, or, or what that means. Only some members have access. How do I manage that then? Can I upload an email list? I need to ask that. Um, or members can access at a certain engagement level, right? And that, of course, if you put valuable resources there, that, of course, you can leverage as a, as a tool for engagement. So in a nutshell, it's basically marrying a course platform with a community platform. You can envision it a little bit similar also to something like Mighty Networks or Circle, right? Um, but I think what I particularly like about school is, first of now, um, Alex Ramosi is a big business influencer in the space. I think he's 2.5 million or 2 million YouTube subscribers. Um, he invested in his company and he, he's now influencer. And they did this thing called School Games, which is a community in there where people compete, right? And and the all the community owners basically show how much monthly recurring revenue can I add within the time frame, right? It restarts every single month. This is the first one that I've heard of, or at least the first one since Alex is on board. And here you can see alone in the, the games community, it's 9.7 thousand members. And there's a school community as well. Um, you know, for, for people, I think this is open. And here you have 44,000 members. And there's a discovery page as well where people can find communities. And so what I like about this compared to Heartbeat or Circle is that when you come here, and we actually ranked up here um, somewhere. Are we already on the second page? That would be horrific. Yeah. OK, so we ranked up here. And this page, especially since Alex Ramosi is now also on board, gets a lot of organic traffic. So uh, this lady, she was like, I don't know what happened, but my community grew so much. And then people were like, yeah. Love, you're on the discovery page, this is why. So there's a lot of organic traffic coming here as well. So I do think a big advantage of this is that you have this overarching community there, um, that you have people there who are interested in either building community, right, which is kind of my ideal client. Um, and you have people there who actually are in other people's communities. So you know it's, if you want to have a membership yourself or if you're a coach or course creator, like this is where your clients hang out. So I really love that overarching element of it. And th the downside is that when you start a community, whether that's a free or a paid one, you pay $99 a month versus a Facebook community is free, right? So when you're just starting out um, and you say, oh, I already have a funnel builder and it comes with a course platform and I'm really tight on budget, might be better for you to start a Facebook group. Right. So there are pros and cons to everything, but I, I really enjoy it. And with the, it comes with the app as well. And that kind of makes it very, very, very addictive too. So that's cool. Okay. So I quickly wanted to say how we created the income spike um, where we got here. And basically that was through our closing lounge and closing emails. I showed you the retargeting campaign already. Um, and here you can see, I also shared the, the closing emails with people. So within the course of three days, we sent seven emails um, to create urgency around, hey, this bundle deal is expiring and you should be getting in now. And I, I wanted to show you quickly the results from Active Campaign. I want to say that we compete in the school games because it really is in full alignment with our vision. We believe that paid communities um, and shared learning experiences are the future with coaching mini membership method. I'm, I have been positioning myself as an expert around that, right? I've helped over 1,500 students in there so far. So I want to be known for that. This is, and now that with Alex Ramosi getting involved, this becomes a broader conversation. I want to be able to contribute to that conversation, right? And if I'm not showing outside of my current bubble, right, which feels warm and cozy. But if I'm not showing that I'm a trustful source to listen to opinions, at least, then I feel like um, I will not have the influence on the discussion that I would like to have, because I want to bring our perspectives, values, methodologies to the discussion. And so for me, it's personally, from a mission perspective, important to be a part here in the games, right? 
this is why I've done it. I want to say that if I would have not participated here in the games, I would have not pushed my email list like this because I also know it was a lot on my audience and um, I, I would also in the future not push this hard again because again, sometimes you can create an income spike today, but you lose X amount of customers you would have had tomorrow if you weren't that aggressive. So usually I strike a better balance, but because this is such a meaningful piece and this is what's really, really important to get ahead because we have the price drop, I was more aggressive with how I'd prefer to be, right? So in the future, I would potentially cut two to three emails back around that. While I want to say on the last day, I will always send two to three emails. And here you can say the open rates were really, really good. So this started here. Uh, we had the games theme, 35.8%, uh, but click rates were already getting kind of low, right? So 1% is still healthy, 37%. Here you see it's really, really low, 30%. This is usually our open rates of 40%. So people were like, we get it, Evelyn, you're launching. <laughs> we don't care anymore, uh, which is so fair. And then here you see also click rate dropped a little bit. Here you can clearly see now um, it's not that interesting anymore. So those were the emails in between. So you can see the, the open rates drop by 10% from what they're on average. Here we had a 16 hour reminder and then um, a six hour reminder where it was a little bit higher. But just looking at those stats, right? I know that I have pushed de definitely too much with it. And we also had a bigger bundle launch for yearly bundles though in on Black Friday. And uh, so it was also too early, right? So usually I would also spread out launches a lot more so the audience can grow and, and be nurtured in the meantime as well. So it doesn't feel so overwhelming. Does school replace member press? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily so. So it is basically when you have a, a set, you have to think for yourself, like in that sense of what do I need in my business right now? When you have member press, for example, you buy it through conversion blueprint funnels, you also get the better license deal. Basically, you're paying a year what you pay on school per month, right? But you have the portal, not the community, right? So you would want to supplement that, complement that with a free Facebook community. And the advantage is that you have a more affordable setup that for me for the last three years in my business was sufficient, right? Um, on the other hand, I do believe that, you know, school will get bigger. I have heard about efforts as in adding conversion tracking, adding in school community upsells. Um, I, I think I heard order bumps. I hope I'm not um, making this up right now. Maybe it was wishful thinking, but I think I heard that. So I do think that the platform will be more and more sophisticated and it will get a lot of attention and traffic right now. So there's also this element of at one point, the people who've been in early will be very well positioned to harvest some of that traffic, if that makes sense, right? So it's kind of, you need to assess, right? What is more important from a strategy perspective for you? Is it right now affordability, validating your offer, you know, getting to a point where, where you are full-time, right? And you can fully focus on this, um, then a, a more affordable setup might be better, right? Or are you in a, in a point where you're like, okay, I, I want to strategically position myself there. I I want to be be a part of that um, and and build it up there. It, it there are different pros and cons to it, right? So I do think for a lot of people, especially the ones that are already on school in other communities and that really enjoy it, I think for them it's a valid consideration. I think for others it's not it's not that you necessarily have to have it in order to build your paid community, right? So I want, I have been transparent about this right from the beginning. I, I'm not, my goal is not to be a school affiliate, right? There are people on the platform, which main goal is to be like a really big affiliate from school, right? Obviously, because you also get a monthly recurring kickback from there, which I think is fair. It is a great platform, but my main aim with recommendations was always to help people make the best decision for them individually as in where they are in their business right now. So I think if you'd want to make that decision, it would make sense to, to write down, here's where I am in my business. 
here are my priorities when it comes to having a membership platform and when it comes to have a community. Um, here's my constraints, right, from budgets, from logistic, logistics, and then you look at, okay, what is within reach and makes the most sense for me right now? What it's, it's a question of what you value most and where you have your constraints. Okay, so that was the email piece and closing launch piece that went so much better than we thought. So I was hoping, <laughs> like, I was like, if we can get to 54,000, it would be so, so good. Because at that point that the second person here, he was making on average, I think, thousand eight or 900 a day. So it's like, yeah, if we make that, it will be enough. And then he had like $4,000 of the days and, and one $5,000. And I was like, uh oh, <laughs> it will not be enough. But then thankfully, we had a much more successful closing launch than I anticipated. So now we made good way ahead. But you see, since we dropped it to the $8, you know, that now, of course, he's catching up. So we will not sleep on the good results from the closing launch. And so in this next phase, what we'll be doing is, again, we will start start to communicate with our audience that $8 is available right now. We actually, the majority of people who came over right now, they came from school and from my interactions in the school community. And because we updated just the banner in our groups, right? So that was over, again, let me make sure I have my numbers correct. That was now 157 members in one and a half days. Um, without any push. And so now what we'll do to stay ahead is we've set up email, uh, we set up ads. So on both accounts, on Jess and my account, sorry. And here, because, you know, we, that was a very successful launch, we have decided to say, okay, since we're already at um, we want to go all in. So we're setting a little bit of a bigger budget for us, right? For some, this is like, oh, you should go bigger. For some, it's like, this is outrageous how much you're spending, right? So again, it's it's different perspectives based on where you are in your business. We've decided to spend on both our ad accounts $1,500 for the last seven days per day. Um, so, you know, that's six days times 3,000. So um, 18,000 dollars but again if you consider how much we already earned and this is monthly recurring revenue it is a very reasonable reinvestment especially because our ads also talk about um our current position and what we did in the school games so this is not only an advertisement for our current new membership this is also an investment into our personal brands as well so currently we have done we have done the same thing, right? So we send people through a bridge page. Which is the sales page for our new membership. So all the traffic is directed here to this page. And then when somebody clicks, they get again redirected here to the about us page where they can sign up. I'm logged in right now, so I'm not seeing the Stripe checkout, but people are redirected to the Stripe checkout. And so what we track here is the click of this button. And here you can see so far we had 29 people who clicked on that button. And on my account, I spent 21 euros per button click. And then on Jess's account, we had 39 so far and we spent $13 uh, dollars per button click. So here you can see Jessa gets much better CPMs on her account as compared to me. But this is an overall, I've been running her ads now for close to a year, almost a year. Um, and this has been on our accounts that she receives significantly more affordable CPMs. But this is also because my audience is coaches, course creators, education niche, online education niche, right? Make money online niche is much more competitive and more expensive than Jess's niche, which is creating digital products, selling them on Etsy. And she is also talking to um, people who are new to this, creatives, right? People who are, who are looking for a side hustle, people who love designing, right? So our audience is much more beginners and much broader, right? So this is why we, on average, see lower CPMs here. And then when we look at the CTRs, you can see that, so 4.7 and 1.6, 
And then here we have 4.5 and 1.6. So you can see that how many people stop the scroll and how many people click through is basically the same on both accounts, but Jessa reaches more people in a more affordable way because of her account history. And so I want to quickly show you the ads here as well. So we have a mixture of image ads and carousel ads. And I also converted one of the ads into videos, into a video. So. And it's just this Roman Empire theme. And then we, of course, have like, hey, how did we rank number one? But we have different variations. So we have uh, three copy variations. One is capitalizing on our current rank. Then we have, do you need help with creating your lead magnets? So solution focused, pain point slash solution focused. And the last one is uh, let's build your high qual um, business one high quality, truly transformative standard offer at a time. These are the different hooks. The, the body part of the copy is very similar. And then in the ad visuals themselves, sometimes we have the leaderboard. In others, we work with this limited time offer. Just one second. So everyone who joins the $8 membership before the end of the month, before the 27th, more in the morning, uh, also receives our new mock-up scene creator that we specifically created for the school games. So again, one is working with a limited time bonus. Others are working with the social proof that we have from the competition. This one is just working with the overall bold promise of the membership, which is build your online empire with legendary offers. This is working with the social proof of being ahead in the competition. This is working with the limited time offer. This is a video, basically. That just all of them together with Canvas. And we also have the hey, we made the membership in seven days. Create better offers faster. So better lead magnets, mini offers, order bombs, workshops, mini memberships. And then we have carousel ads where basically we have the messages together. So people can swipe through all of them. So let me see what performs the best here. So far, the limited, this is not a surprise. So the limited time bonus here for the um, mock-up uh, mastery school games edition is performing best. And then let me see if that's true on my account because Jess's and my audience are always a little bit different as in um, what really speaks to them. Okay, I also have a clear winner. No, it's the same here as well. It's the, this is so interesting. You can't forget to add something with urgency. Cool. OK, that's really interesting that it's the same across both accounts. Very, very insightful. So I can't wait to debrief those. We just started them. Like I said, we will spend a total of around $18,000 on this closing campaign here. And in addition to that, we will, of course, also, again, send emails. No, I don't mind at all. So what audiences do, I, do we target? So on my account, I've tested a lot of um, Advantage Plus targeting and Advantage Plus shopping campaigns. So when you look on my site here, this is an Advantage Plus shopping campaign. And basically, we only have one ad set, right? One target targeting, if you want. And that is Facebook's AI targeting. So we have uh, we target the countries. So those are audience controls. Those are basically hard boundaries for the algorithm. Just one second. I target Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, and United States. Then we have Advantage Plus audience. So this is Facebook's ad AI algorithm. And it's basically the evolution of, remember when you could put targeting and then you say expand the audience if you think that you can get me better results. So this is the next kind of evolution of that, which is, let us do the targeting and then you can add suggestions, right? So in the past you would do, this is my targeting. Feel free to step out of it if you feel like you can get me better results. And now it's like you do the targeting and if I want to, I can give recommendations. So I could give here some of my best performing audiences is Gary Vaynerchuk um, or I had always good results with a mix of Amy Porterfield, Brandon Burchard, um, Marie Forleo and Female Entrepreneur Association. Those uh, influences in an ad set would always work really well for me. But my campaign is and uh, my account is now at a point where 
it works best if I just let the algorithm loose and I'm like, yeah. Facebook, you do whatever you think is best for my account. But it also was a way to build that up, right? So uh, often we see newer accounts struggle with this. So for new accounts, I highly recommend adding a few suggestions for the algorithm so they know um, they have a starting point as into where should I pierce into the audience. Uh, on, on my account, I've collected a lot of purchase data, a lot of user data. So the algorithm has a big data set to work with. Now on Jess's account, which is where um, I have not built up um, the system yet, we still do interest-based targeting. And so we have a retargeting audience, uh, basically retargeting all our warm audiences. Then we have the productive entrepreneur. This is an audience that always works really well here. Small business planning, self-employment, notebook, entrepreneurship, paper, productivity, home business, or female entrepreneur. Then Gary V. I owe this audience so much. <laughs> And if you do anything where you would want to work with entrepreneurs, this is a great audience for you. This is a great starter audience for everyone who wants to work with entrepreneurs. And then um, this is called Roberta Best, but it's not that. It is actually um, Brandon Burchard, Brittany Brown, Louis Hose, or Marie Forleo. So those are just more like inspiring influencers and uh, people in that are into self-development typically find them really interesting. Um, here you can see Gary V is after the retargeting audience, the best one for us right now. Yeah, so let me see if we have other questions. No, I would love to do that, but school does not have an affiliate system yet. But I also heard the rumors that it will have that. And I've been so, 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 so frustrated with ClickFunnels Backpack affiliate system. And I have over the last year searched for a better solution. And there was no tool that really worked for our setup. Um, I spent hours and probably a few thousand dollars to figure out, figure it out and it still is not fully round. So it's very frustrating. And if school has a native setup there, um, I'm, I will feel very tempted to move things. I also right now, one thing that would be real game changer about school would be if there, if you can combine multiple membership levels into one community, because that's a big pain point for our members right now is I'm in Coach Growth Up and then I'm also in um funnels and ads pro right and now i have to go back and forth between the different groups and i have to go back and forth between the different portals and it will be so helpful if you can restrict the course content by what plan someone is on and if you could actually um because in school you can already categorize posts into um categories and if you could manage permissions on those categories and then all your community and all your coursework is in one place that would be the biggest game changer. I've not seen, you know, this solved anywhere prop uh, properly. And that would also help people who work with Ascension models like we do, right? So we want to make it really, really accessible for beginners, which is why we have below $10. Usually we have $7. I also got a lot of questions around, oh, why do you do $8 right now? So I want to also address this. My dad helps me a lot with the accounting and preparing data for our accountants and also uh, you know, I cannot make decisions in my business if I don't have solid numbers that I can base those decisions on. Uh, and my dad helps me prepare those numbers. And he was like, if you're adding another product, another subscription at the same cost, another $7, I'll kill you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, it's $8 now. So people are like, oh, are we changing the strategy? Does $8 convert better? And I'm like, no, I just want to stay alive. <laughs> um, so yeah, if long story short, if school adds affiliate, I think this would be amazing. If it adds multi tier, I also think it would be really, really amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That was so much lovely support and I so appreciate it. I did that and then maybe soon Alex Ramosi will become the next scary of audience targeting. I wish this would be the case, right? But they, they tend to remove people instead of adding them. A really soul crushing moment was for the mindset coaches community when they removed Tony Robbins from the targeting options. That was terrible. Um, so I don't think that they add more people or more targeting options like that in. Also because, you know, it's potentially, wouldn't Facebook then actually, or isn't Facebook actually benefiting from the likeness of these people, right? So is this really like 
sound or could those, could those be like legal issues? So I think they, they're just betting on their AI to get better. And I have to say, I kept testing this over and over again. I was really frustrated with how it would actually not work, but now it's really good. So I do think that the future of Facebook targeting is there's no Facebook targeting because it's all like running in the background and you as the user cannot do like so much anymore, which is also when you talk, you know, I still have friends who have ad agencies and their focus is on creative. Their focus is if they're anything with e-commerce, you know, helping their customers organize UGC, user generated content, and really coming up with creative strategies. And they also more and more tap into helping them to optimize the offers and the funnels themselves, rather than, you know, figuring out targeting hacks, et cetera, because that will become more and more and more user-friendly and democratized in that sense. Um, at least that's my hypothesis. Okay, did I want to share anything else about the school games? I'm not sure. If you have any other questions, please let me know and drop them so I can make sure I'm answering this. I will also, I compiled a lot of notes, a lot of thoughts around this, and I will do a, a training for coaching my, my coaching mini membership method students, my alumni and the joint ticket holders in March after all the dust is settled. Um, so look, one reason is also why I wanted to participate. I know now that Alex Ramosi is invested. We are, it already started in the communities that especially in coaching mini membership method, students would ask me, hey, should I start a school community, right? And up until this point, I could only say, I'm only doing Facebook over here, right? But is it really the future? Because we hear from our members that they don't log into Facebook anymore, right? Or that they um, barely are in Facebook. And if if they are, it's always really, like, really distracting. Uh, and many of our members don't want to build their community necessarily on Facebook, right? Also because they have no control over um, how many people they reach with their posts, even in their paid communities, right? So when I post in Coach Group Hub, I'm lucky if I reach 2,000 people. The membership has over 6,000 people in there. I cannot even reach my own community and I have no way I would pay for it <laughs> if they gave me the option, but they don't even give me the option to pay to reach my full community. Email the same. Now they made on the, since the 1st of February, they make those, made those uh, DMARC changes, right? And I did everything Active Campaign said I need to do to update it. We had multiple customers complaining that, hey, I've sent this email five times. Can I please get a reply? It was like, we sent you the reply, but it doesn't arrive in their inboxes anymore, right? So I can, while I love my email list and it's great, I cannot guarantee now that I'm reaching my customers via email and I cannot guarantee that I'm reaching them in the, in the Facebook communities because Facebook manages who sees what, right? And so from what I've experienced in the school community so far is that it's not, um, that it's not like that, right? So um got a lot of questions a lot of people want to build somewhere else and up until this point i could not from my own personal experience share any other insight or lesson at least now when somebody asks me and says do should i do a facebook community or should i do a school community i can say let me know where you are and where your goals are and based on my experience i can tell you what's the best fit for you right now i was not able to do this genuinely before this experience so that was also a big motivation to just you know, innovate and stay ahead of the curve as into what is happening with paid online communities. And I think a lot will still happen on school. And I'm very, very grateful we are in there and 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 started building early and collect experience early. Yeah, see, there's so many. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, the end. There's so many people who are like, yeah, I don't want to build on Facebook. I definitely want to build somewhere else. And uh, I was also surprised there are big a few big names like Dan Henry. He's also um, a, a bigger name in the industry. I didn't know, but his community was also built on school, right? And when you look through the, you can go to school, go to the discovery tab. When you look through, there are many established communities there, right? And big YouTube creators uh, gravitate towards that rather than Facebook groups. So I think we will see a lot of movement and momentum there. And I'm grateful that you know I, I didn't sleep over the development and I can at least share with my audience what's going on there and, and everything that I think they need to know and I can professionally reply to their questions. Okay, that was the update. Um, I'll keep you posted. I hope we'll be able to uh, keep going the way or, you know, just, I know that the difference will now get smaller, but I hope we can somehow hold the first place. If not, 
I'm nothing but grateful already. It feels like a huge win already. Um, and I want to thank everyone in my audience who has been, you know, patient with us and patient with the emails. I know it has been a lot of communication from our end regarding uh, those offers, but, you know, we committed to keep adding mostly value. And sometimes when we launch, we will be a little bit annoying. So thank you for graciously <laughs> overlooking that and understanding that uh, for the most part. And I really appreciate you. I'm really, really grateful and I can't wait to share more updates. Thank you everyone. Bye for now.